And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the foie gras. You know, and in the foie gras, first and foremost, you know, again, the kind of duality of it is it is a liver. You know, and so we do need to do a little bit of cleaning with it. There's a number of different ways you can prepare foie gras. Uh, we're going to go ahead and slice this. And I have seen people do it with just a, a, a regular knife. Uh, I like to use uh, hot water and a slicer. And that way you think about this being uh, really high in fat. The hot knife helps cut through it without it breaking apart. Yeah. But you said sometimes you get real hot butter and you cut through it with a knife, it'll, like a chip of it will come off just because it's kind of hard and crumbly. Yeah, and this will help slice through it. But in looking at this, you know, we have uh, really two lobes here. You see some of the discoloration from a vein. If we were going to prepare this for torsion or for terrine where we would take it apart, there's actually a whole other preparation for this. If we leave temp uh, butter out at room temperature, it gets soft and pliable almost like Play-Doh. Well, this being an animal fat, has that same kind of saturated fat characteristic, uh, what we would do with this instead of leaving it out because it's perishable is we would zip lock it, put it in 80 degree water for about an hour, take it out, and this is going to be soft like Play-Doh. And so that means we can kind of push back the, uh, the fat and the, and the meat of it to pull out and extract the veins as opposed to kind of like taking it apart into different chunks and extracting the veins. So that's something that we could do if we we're going to make a torsion. Torsion is kind of rolled up in cheesecloth like what we did when we rolled up mozzarella cheese in Foods One into the little roulades, or like what we did with compound butter this semester. But it's just, or even, I guess, the galantines that we made in that we wrapped those in cheesecloth. And they're typically dried and maybe used as a part of an hors d'oeuvre, a little, uh, you know, nice medallion of the foie gras as a part of that. But for this, we're just going to start to peel it apart a little bit into the two lobes. And we're just going to follow the natural seams for it. In an A grade, there shouldn't be a whole lot of veiny nature for it. For a lower grade, you're going to see more veins here because the size of it might be a little bit smaller, but more importantly, it has a whole lot less fat in it. And so that means the veins are going to be much more noticeable. But I'm just going to dip my knife in the hot water. And then you know, what we're looking for is just to slice through, create a nice little slice that we'd be able to take and sear later on. Uh, the scraps from foie gras. We would want to save, and we could use for a number of other preparations. You know, again, maybe for a little bit of charcuterie, uh, something along those lines. But you have to remind yourself, again, very expensive. You know, almost $50 a pound for this. Yeah, and so you have to try to take advantage of every little bit that's there uh, to make it really useful. And so just those little odds and ends that we maybe wouldn't be able to use as a part of our sauteed preparation for an appetizer, we would save for something else. And then, you know, in a portion like this where it gets smaller, you might actually serve two, por two slices or two pieces of a portion just because we're getting smaller here. Foie gras sometimes is scored, uh, but for a different reason. You think about it, we score duck breasts to help render the skin out. With the foie gras, it's more of a, a decoration uh, in terms of scoring it. So we have a real thin piece. Actually, that's a, a little bit bigger than what I thought, but we'll come back and cut that. I just thought that was like a little bit more of a shelf. We have a little bit of membrane and fat here. You know, uh, we would want to remove that. You know, if we're portioning this out for a restaurant, you know, certainly a portion scale here, you know, we would price it out. Uh, to the size of what we're portioning. Again, you're going to treat this like butter when we cook it in the pan. It's going to want to shrink up. And for our purposes today, because I think that's where, uh, oh, no, you have a different question, Todd. I thought you were Michael. No, I was just going to say it looks like clay, like the texture. Kind of. Um, for our preparation today, you think about we're going to sear this, we're going to uh, take the residual fat in the pan, and we're going to make a, like a, a pan Purdue or French toast out of it. And that's going to be the base almost as an open face sandwich or a canapé with this foie gras. So we could take a larger piece like this, sear it, come back, maybe cut it in half, you know, uh, to serve it as a, a part of our portion. This piece right here, I'm just going to trim the end off of it. So you look at if we were portioning this out for a menu, you know, certainly some of these smaller pieces in terms of portion we would double up. Some of these little scraps we would save for something else. You know, we would save them for a part of a charcuterie preparation. If we were going to come back and score these, you're not really cutting it with the knife. I've even seen people do it with the back of the knife, but you're taking it and we're not cutting into it as much as you're just kind of coming on the side and making a, like a, just a little riff 
you know, or maybe like a little uh, edge there. And so that way when this cooks, this isn't really to help it render out as much as it'll produce this little like crosshatch pattern for it when it's done. You know, it, again, not the same purpose of us scoring the skin of the duck where we want, we're scoring it to render it. Here this is meant to be just like that little decorative pattern in the finished product. But I like to store it uh, just laid out in, in parchment, you know, half sheet pan with the other parchment just draped over it. You know, that way it's not wrapped super tightly and it's easy to access uh, during a production if we had this in the a la carte portion of the kitchen. We have our regular chicken livers and we're going to prepare these for rumaki. You know, you, you really look at the size of that big foie gras liver. Chicken liver, duck liver, there's a little bit of discrepancy in size, but for the most part we're saying similar size. So you look at what makes the difference is that enlargement with all that additional fat. But with these uh, livers, we just want to do a little bit of cleaning up here. So we'll just take a, a couple of them, lay them out. And you see that the chicken livers have kind of two big lobes to them. And what we're going to do is separate out those lobes. And all we're going to do is just kind of take the knife, scrape it to the side, just start, start to see a little bit of that connective tissue uh, come free. And it's just a very small amount. And then we would scrape that off, cut that off, so we would have two separate lobes for our preparation. If there's any green on there, you absolutely want to cut that off in the case of there might be a little bit of bile left as a part of that. That's going to be very bitter. Yeah, that's a, a part of the digestive function uh, of livers. And if in doubt, I mean, my one thing is, you know, livers, very inexpensive. You know, we're looking at like $1.97 a pound for this, uh, something that's, uh, you know, if in doubt, just put it to the side, maybe use it for another preparation if we're worried about these small pieces. Yeah, again, we think about not necessarily connective tissue, but the livers could be incorporated as a part of a charcuterie preparation where we're incorporating in a force meat or maybe marinating them and put them in as a part of garnishes. So yeah, you can use all of this. We just want to trim up these nice little pieces so that we're going to have a nice portion to wrap with our bacon for the rumaki. You want to have a nice little portion to marinate. And, by no means do I think that we're going to end up using all these today for the rumaki preparation, but we can certainly reserve some and do the uh, ever famous uh, fried chicken liver uh, with some of that. Uh, I'm down for that. You know, that, that sounds good to me. But we just end up with this nice kind of trimmed up portion that's going to be more uniform, good to wrap, not very hard to do, very easy to do. We're going to talk about the turkey and the Cornish hens. We'll finish up here so this is fresh in your mind since that's the fabrication looking for you guys to have hands on with. So one thing in the past, we have used the whole turkey for this preparation. You think about turkey leg. It's a lot more fibrous and has a lot stronger connective tissue than your regular chicken leg. Yeah, in fact, when we French out the turkey leg and I'm looking to use the meat as a part of a mousseline or a force meat preparation, I usually cut around about the top half of it and that's really strong kind of hardy tendons and connective tissue that I don't want to use. And the bottom half of it is where the meat is that we could use for a force meat or a ground turkey. And uh, if we were using it for uh, a mousseline, we might push it through a sieve to make sure we move all the tendon. For the preparation we have here where we just have the whole breast, we're going to take this off the bone and then we're going to take the tenderloins and we're going to end up using those for our mousseline today. And we might trim up the breast a little bit, but when we're going to separate these out into the two breasts, the first thing is we're going to just come right along in the center where the keel bone is and your bony knife is typically going to fall right on one side or the other. And something that you may have heard me say previously but very important to our preparation today, when we're fabricating and cutting off the bone, again, we're looking to take nice long strokes and not jab and saw back and forth because that tip of the knife going into the meat is going to kind of have that pre-chewed effect with it. So I'm just trying to follow the curvature of that keel bone all the way down the rib. And you could certainly use your knife both directions, but I like to pull the meat away as I'm cutting it. So we have one of the turkey breast removed. We'll just turn around, go the other direction, again feeling for the keel bone, trying to use that as our guide, nice long slicing strokes, coming around the carcass. In the case of the chickens, we'll have a little bit more rib to follow there than what we have here. And what we will do is come back and see if there's some miscut here, particularly on the bottom. 
larger bird, we have more meat here than what we would have on a chicken. You know, and so we're just going to come back. We're going to take off some of this additional meat that's left here. This additional meat uh, we'll use as a part of that mousseline preparation to make that green curry stuffing for this uh, turkey breast. But also, you think about what we talk about in lecture. If I'm not going to use this to make stock, what can I do with these bones if we're roasting the turkey? Yeah, we could go ahead and break up the bones a little bit, condense them in size, put them in the pan with our mirepoix. You know, we're not going to end up making a separate stock out of this, but in order to take advantage of all the flavor that we have here, put it in the bottom of the roasting pan. So when we deglaze that roasting pan with the coconut milk later on this afternoon, we'll have all this extra flavor as a part of it. So I've taken a lot of that additional meat off. We'll put that there. We'll come back and we want to trim this up a little bit. Just we want to remove the skin. So we'll have some nice, uh, more trim pieces for that mousseline force meat. Uh, the mousseline force meat isn't just flavor, but it can act as a binder. So let's say we have a lot of additional meat. We could take some of this meat diced or chunked and fold it into that mousseline green curry force meat. So that way when we take the slice of the turkey, we have the breast meat, but we also have in that force meat big chunks of, of turkey. And so that makes just a more useful protein uh, for maybe a portion. Would you put the skin in the pan with your mirepoix? Yeah. 